Okay, this video is going to be a brief tour of the cooling system on a 2004 Dodge Dakota with a 3.7 liter V6. Um, this is also to supplement the cooling systems assignment uh, for the grade 11 auto class. Um, before I start the video, I have a helpful assistant here. Um, this little guy um, got this thing on Amazon for about 35 bucks. It's an LED light. Um, it's got a magnetic base on it that also swivels and it is amazing. Um, and I'm starting to see these things show up everywhere. Um, they're super helpful. So this guy is going to be my assistant today. Alrighty, uh, I'm going to start at the top. Uh, light's actually too bright. There we go. So this is, in this particular vehicle, this is the actual reservoir. Um, and obviously that's where your coolant goes. Notice on the other side of this great big tank that there is another reservoir. And so note to self, don't cross yourself up by putting coolant in your windshield washer fluid reservoir. Well, you'll be able to tell because your windshield's going to get nice and smeary. Uh, and don't put windshield washer fluid in there. Uh, you're going to have to drain your cooling system and flush it. Um, so uh, at the top of the motor right here, there is an outlet right here that's actually attached to the intake manifold um, if you look down in underneath the alternator right down in there that's actually a fitting that's attached to the intake manifold so the coolant after it has gone through the motor comes out of that fitting and then it travels through this hose and this is a pressure cap um, which is actually explained pretty well on the video that I attached to the assignment. Um, and that little, the little upper hose, this guy here, uh, that flows down to the reservoir. And the main large hose right here, that one goes into the top of the radiator. And the radiator on this vehicle is pretty easy to find. It's right on the front. And there's a little bit of a insect screen going across in front of it. There's also a transmission cooler. Um, in the assignment, the transmission cooler is actually in the side of the radiator. And that was a fairly popular thing to do for a little while there. Um, the only issue is that if you ever have any, uh, even a light impact on the front of the vehicle that might damage the grill, and you might you know replace the grill and move on well inside the radiator if there's a crack or if there's any damage internally um, then your transmission fluid in that side cooler might cross over into the actual antifreeze and so there's all kinds of cases of that happening and you end up with coolant you end up with antifreeze running into the transmission and on an automatic transmission that causes catastrophic damage because the antifreeze um, basically thins out the transmission fluid and then the clutch plates in the transmission start wearing and you end up with a massive transmission repair bill all because of a little bit of damage on the, on the, on the radiator. So it's amazing how all these little systems you know, interrelate. So on this vehicle and on more vehicles that I'm seeing the transmission cooler is actually like a little mini radiator for the transmission fluid and it's out front and so the air will flow through it and then through the radiator and they're separate there's no connections they just happen to be located here together so back to cooling system um, that hose right down in there connects into the radiator and so this is the outlet hose outlet from the motor inlet for the radiator okay so the coolant has already traveled through the motor it has absorbed engine heat and now it's flowing to the radiator to be cooled um, how hot is it well you got to keep in mind that um, there's no way to accurately measure that and I suppose unless you had one of those little temperature guns that you can point at it um, your temperature gauge on the dash of your vehicle um, it records the temperature that comes from the temperature sensor and so if the temperature sensor is right here 
or right here, then you'll be able to measure exactly what that temperature is on the way out. Um, however, in a lot of, you know, well, every temperature sensor is located in different places. On this vehicle, the temperature sensor is located in the little valley down in here behind the alternator. Um, let's see if I can get some light on it. Okay, so you'll see a white plug and then just in front of it is a little black plug and that black plug is actually the temperature sensor okay and you can see that it's screwed down into the intake manifold so it's in a different location than the actual outlet hose so back to the original point how hot's the coolant when it's on its way out don't know but that is a um, this system is designed to run, I believe, at 95 degrees Celsius. The thermostat um, has a 95C designation on it, which means when the thermostat's fully open, um, it's 95 degrees to get it to, to fully open, okay? So that your coolant is gonna go in and out of the radiator at, at its, you know, highest flow rate that's possible. Um, so let's assume just to make it simple, that this coolant is coming out at 95 degrees Celsius. It's gonna run into the radiator. And then if you look at all the little horizontal silver lines going across, those are actually little wee skinny hollow tubes. They're very, very small and they're very, very fine. And then in between are all these little zigzaggy fins. And this works on the exact same principle as a baseboard heater. And I think I might have explained this briefly in another video. Um, but as the hot coolant goes through these little tubes, these little zigzaggy fins absorb that coolant. And then because you've got air running through here, the air is going to pick up and absorb the heat on the fins, which then means that the fin temperature is going to go down which means that the coolant tube temperature is going to go down. Um, and the whole baseboard I uh, heater idea works in reverse. You use a resistance heater to actually create heat through the middle of the baseboard heater, and then the little fins on the outside absorb the heat from the baseboard, um, from, the, from the resistance heater, and that creates heat, okay? So in the case of a baseboard heater, you're trying to heat something up, in the case of a radiator, you're using the same idea. You're using convection airflow to cool off something that has conducted heat, okay? So the center tube here um, conducts heat and that conduction goes into the fins and then the air passing through the fins convects the heat away. And I don't know, let me see if I can backlight the rad here somehow or other. This thing's pretty skinny. Eh, I was gonna see if I could shine a light right through. It doesn't look like I can fit it back there. Anyways, let's move on. So in this particular uh, radiator, the water flows across from driver's side to passenger side. And then on the passenger side, way down in there, if you look to the bottom of the video, well, you can hopefully see that hose clamp down there and that same large hose. And it uh, kind of zigzags its way through a whole bunch of stuff. And if this looks crowded, well, you've never worked on a BMW. Um, here's the hose, okay? It is now coming into the motor way down there, okay? Underneath the uh, tensioner, the belt tensioner, which I showed in another video. And um, turn this light up a little bit. Oops. There we go. Okay. So yeah, that's where your that's where your coolant comes back in. Um, what I can't show you is the thermostat. Uh, the thermostat is actually right inside that fitting. Okay, so you can see the end of the hose clamp there. And so I've had that uh, thermostat off. It's actually not that hard to get at. I didn't even have to remove the belt tensioner. All I did was uh, remove the tension on the belt and take the belt off. And then the pulley that you see right in the middle of your picture, that thing actually moves upwards and gives you enough room to access the thermostat housing. So the thermostat housing is basically just a fitting. Um, the hose fits on the end of it. The thermostat sits inside it. There's two bolts and it fastens directly to the front of the engine block. 
And so by the time the coolant goes through the radiator and then comes back to this point, it has cooled down. Now, how much has it cooled down? Uh, there's so many variables to that, right? If you're sitting in traffic and not driving, then it doesn't actually cool down all that much because the radiator relies on airflow. Um, if you're driving, then it's going to get cooled off really effectively. If you're driving in the winter, it really gets cooled off. And so the job of the thermostat is to make sure that the engine is running at the same temperature all the time. Okay, you do not want different engine temperatures. If you remember back to the fuel and air topic where that little temperature sensor, let's go find it again. That little temperature sensor is talking to the computer, telling the computer how warmed up the vehicle is. Well, you don't want it to be sending different signals all the time because then the engine is going to create different fuel mixtures all the time and that's going to go wonky with your fuel economy and with your power. So that little wee thermostat down there has an awfully important job because it basically, it opens, let me get on the camera here, where are we, there we go. The thermostat opens and closes based on how hot the coolant is and uh, that's even worse, sorry guys, rookie cameraman. Um, it opens and closes based on how uh, hot or cold the coolant is and so in the winter time for example the thermostat's actually not going to be open very far and it's only going to be allowing a little bit of a trickle of coolant through the system because the engine's cold in the first place and it's got cold air blowing over it while you drive. So it doesn't really need to be cooled off that much relative to the summertime. So the thermostat basically is going to find a resting point.